So welcome to another recording of our gatherings, of our Earthnable gatherings, um, exploration into consciousness. And today our topic is good trouble. And I suppose we're, we're, we're going through the eclipse portal at the moment uh, from the 25th of March now to the, I think it's the 8th, right? 8th of April. But anyway, they overlap. Um, what a better time to talk about liberating and celebrating our uniqueness, right? And and looking at, you know, good trouble is that nice oxymoron where, you know, what's it going to take to be truly you? Can you, are you willing to allow yourself to be truly you, your quirks, your talents, your gifts? And of course, the triggers, you know, that you um present to other people when you're really stepping into your authentic beingness and this is quite interesting and and how often do we actually misidentify that you know um because we're getting a reaction from people that we are misunderstanding instead of seeing that we are the leaders we are the um facilitators not we, not us here in particular, every single one. As soon as you trigger somebody else, there's a facilitation going on. You're providing a certain energy, a certain space to somebody else to look in the mirror, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, and you see, uh, to be a good trouble in active state, not present in all people today who is on earth, in active state at some level inside yes maybe but uh some people don't have that part of their experience activated but we <laughs> have people who have in active state in this life to be a good trouble i, I like that you the, the word you're using active being good trouble actively or being good trouble passively because yeah. i would say when we're doing it passively when we're not allowing ourselves to be the uniqueness that we are then that can turn into what depression regression right and and feeling overbloating like over inside it's boiling inside but we're not letting it out in a creative way in a way that will touch uh, strings of our world. You see, uh, this is kind of like what invoking me when you posted this topic, uh, because uh, I mean, when I say not active state for many people, it means they were not born this time with their personality type to be actively trouble, good trouble in this life. Maybe they were in previous lives, maybe they will be in future lives, but they are kind of like uh, not in active state, having that good trouble energy intention inside of them in this life. But we have a lot of people who are good trouble in active state. It means they, they were born in that body that they are carrying today to be active with good trouble. And it's very important in our time of transition. You see, uh, we are kind of like uh, floating now in this transition period from our previous uh, experience of humanity, yeah? That we, we were still exploring duality, we were still exploring fight, conflict, all that thing. And we are floating, transitioning into state of our experience about some kind of um, heart energy in a sense of uh, remembering who we are, remembering our essence, who we are as human beings, what is essence of human being. You see, we, when we look into that essence of human being, it's very particular thing. It's having heart. This is human body. We are all having heart. And heart energy, uh, this is that expansion. 
this is beyond any fight, any conflict or anything of that nature. It's not opposition. On contrary, it's uh, collaboration, it's celebration, it's coming together and doing something together that native actually called creating beauty that we see in nature. And today, when we are still in transition, we don't have enough those people who are start to really actively be how they were born, good trouble. So, so would you say, Irina, that the good trouble people, and we're gonna start, we're gonna use a couple examples later on. Um, the good troubled people, are they showing us that we are moving into a phase or an era of individuality and that individuality, because, you know, that's what I, I associate with heart. I associate heart with ego and ego with individuality all of it as a, as a very progressive sort of um, evolution, really. Agreed with you 100%. I call it a little bit different. I don't call it ego because it has so strange stigma mm -hmm. in our days from our previous experience. I call it strong personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how I call it. But yeah. you're totally right uh, in uh, how I, I see our days now because before we were still in kind like childlike state in relation to our consciousness entire humanity we didn't remember a lot we were kind like just developing just coming to possibility to remember something to become conscious about this world Hmm. About the universe in general, about Mother Earth, about who we are as human beings, what we are doing here. And now it's more and more available. So yes, it is now time for those people who start to walk this path, you see, to remember, to become conscious about life, what life is. For those people really come and become personality that is uniquely different from anyone else. That's why maybe you love that guy, this tennis player, because he is not afraid to explore who he is. Through what he is doing, he is exploring his being, he is showing his being, who he is as, as unique personality, yeah. So let's throw in for for people who don't know. We've uh, when we put the when I put the invitation out, I used uh, Nick Kyrgios, the um, Australian tennis player, and everyone knows Nick because of his controversial style of playing and his uh, controversial behavior on the courts and how he pisses pretty much everyone off and goes exactly against everything that you know uh, tennis stands for and so many and so many was at least he used to be right and he's actually uh started a podcast a show where he talks to people and it's called good with trouble you know and he speaks to people who just like Arena beautifully, um, you know, uh, defined here to those individuals, to those personalities, to those sort of um, good trouble people that allow themselves to come out with their quirkiness, with their talents, with their gifts. And they are not afraid to not being part, to, to go against the grain. They don't consider themselves the sheep. They are the ones that are running with the wolves. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these are the people, we all have that good trouble within ourselves. And you're absolutely right, Arena. There are some people that are born, they don't even need to think about it. They've come up through this. But even myself being happy, I've got that rebel. I've got that sort of revolutionary within me, but I had to deprogram myself for the majority of my lifetime in order to 
actually see it to acknowledge it. And even now, I'm still not entirely sure how I, I can't, I, I will never be able to do what, what a Nick Kyrgios does, you know, but I can totally appreciate it. I can totally appreciate it. I, I love it. It really raves me up to see people so authentic and not having a point of view about it. What do you say, Mary? What do you think? Yes, I agree, Martina. I I think it's he's I I really watched him with an awful lot of interest when he was in the final with um, what's the other guy's name? Oh, uh, uh, Djokovic. Djokovic, yeah. And they were so different, and they both manifested a completely different energy in the final and in their preparation for the final and the way they talked about it and everything. And equally good teachers in in completely different ways, which is so interesting to to observe. And and uh, just what Irene was saying there earlier too about we can be actively or passively good trouble. And I I like that because that sort of sits easy with me because it doesn't challenge. I feel that's not such a big challenge, but actually it's a bigger challenge than I would think. And I was thinking about this in relation to the human design that we've been talking about the last few weeks and the different impulses, you know, that each different type of personality have and how they manifest that in the world. And when you were talking last week, actually, there was a good conversation going. So I didn't go into it because I kind of didn't want to interrupt it. But one of the things you were talking about was, you know, the response and the responder. And of course, this ties in with the good trouble as well. And you, I was just sitting, listening and thinking to myself and feeling that one also responds, even though they don't speak. You don't have to speak to respond. And I think that in relation to being the good trouble passively or actively, it's the same kind of energy. You can be good trouble passively without ever actually saying anything, but your very presence there makes a contribution. And that's but the you... thing about, you know, the, yeah, that's the thing too about, you know, your quirkiness and trying to hide your quirkiness, which I would have spent a lot of time doing. But I discovered, of course, I can't do it. I can't hide it because it's just ex it just exudes out of me. It's me, whether I'm opening my mouth or hiding behind a bushel or what I'm doing, I can't hide who I am and I can't not be who I am. That energy is coming out, it's vibrating out, it's affecting the environment, it's affecting the people around me. That in turn is affecting me because it's going both ways. So if I never spoke or if I never did anything, I'm still doing a lot. And I think that that's maybe what I'm saying about, you know, the passive piece that I liked because it feels less challenging. But actually, it's not really because when you kind of live a bit out of that place, you 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 learn, you know, I, I'm one of these people that like Martina's partner. I have a very strong activated defined sacral with the tube coming to my throat, going to the third eye. So. I would find that I could respond very quickly to things verbally, but I actually don't. And that's something that I think I, th I think that's where wisdom actually has come in, because I don't need to. It's enough for me to know my own response. I don't have to verbalize it. There are times that it is OK to verbalize it or it's good to verbalize it or it's good to share that. And again, it's just that kind of instinctual wisdom thing that kicks in, you know, that maybe I should say this or that, or if I'm invited to, I will. But it's it's not always necessary to do it. So in uh, going back to the, the conversation about the good trouble, I think we're all good trouble, actually, in a lot of ways. I agree with you, Mary, and I want to throw a little bit more expansion to that. Okay. Uh, I believe in this transition time, uh, those people, what I call actively good trouble, uh, and who become, because of their expansion, 
they shifted into passive state, being passively good trouble. Mm -hmm. I believe now it's a time of polishing this gift, these talents that we never had maybe a lot enough of consciousness on the planet to spread that being good trouble all over. We were kind of like good trouble in some places before, but not everywhere on earth, like a normal human type of existence, normal mm -hmm. human personality as a good trouble. My observation uh, brought me to conclusion that the moment when people start to call themselves spiritual, they step into some kind of expansion, remembering, uh, becoming conscious more than usual people around. We kind of like start to quiet ourselves because we become spiritually polite or I even don't know how to call it. We stopped being loud. We start kind of like be quiet in our expansion, in our conscious presence in this world today. And what you are saying, yes, I see that uh, uh, in um, that um, tendency that we become quiet and we think that if our presence with that energy that we feel inside, but not expressing that energy, in particular situation, that situation will solved somehow. Yes, it's true on some level of experience, but it's not going to physical level of experience. And this is what he is doing, this guy, uh, Nick. He is descending that his truth, he's connected, I believe even subconsciously, unconsciously, he doesn't understand maybe completely who he is, what is connected to, but he is descending to our physical level. And this is what I'm talking we are lacking today because we are in this numbing state of transition. We know everything will be good and we know everything before we don't want to have anymore, but we are transitioning to that good, but Look how many people who already know this, what we are talking about, showing how to be now in this transition time. In my mm -hmm. opinion, we don't have enough people grounded in physical presence, doing it in physical world, on physical, on physical level, showing how we can make this transition happier, quicker, and more precise, not to wander in everywhere, you know, until we reach that good thing. Because we all know everything is good. Yes, it's true. But we are now living our lives and look at us. It's not good. In many cases, it's not good. And this is what I see those spiritual people. They just become quiet because they start to realize more. Or another um, um, side of this question, why they are quiet, because of rates, especially this is connected to people who are famous, media famous. They just don't want to lose their rates. They are kind of like serving uh, uh, what crowd asking for them to say. And they are not true to themselves in being good trouble how they were born in this life. You see, not everyone born in this life to be active being this good trouble. Someone doesn't have that volume inside of them to be loud with their good trouble, who they are, their personality defining. But some of mm -hmm. us were born yeah, I, to say out loud on physical level. Yeah. yeah. It's hard, I think, Irina, for some people to um well maybe they have voiced 
what they really, their authenticity and voiced it over and over again and feel that it wasn't heard. And I think that that does have an effect. And also the effect that, uh, you know, if they're not in a supportive kind of group, if they're alone, because, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of unity in, in certain different energy fields here on the planet at the moment. And I think that people who try to make a difference and they try to get something moving or shifting or changing, they need to be able to align themselves with the kind of people who will support them in that rather than just a voice on their own. And I'm not diminishing at all what what the what the lone ranger can kind of achieve but i think it's a time where people need to come together more that are kind of of that kind of like-minded energy and that kind of energy that sees what needs to be done or whatever and that that does give people support in going forward and being able to what you were saying, you know, they go quiet and they don't say things. You know, you see it across the board in politics and everywhere in in every country. You know, there, there are some great politicians, they're great visionaries. Some of them, they go into politics to make a difference and make a change, but they come up against such a strong system. They just can't do it because the system is against them and they don't have enough support. That's there's two things that are wrong. In, yes, in the you're right, form. Mary. You're right, Mary, in that. But what you are saying is describing that we have some kind of only very particular places when people start to be active in being good trouble, trying to show the way in this transition time. But it's not enough. If we have inside of us that energy and knowing, I have that good trouble inside of me, I have that energy, and I live somewhere, yes? Start to be active. When those people will be active with this type of, saying who, what they feel inside, but not in old way fighting or proving something, yeah. but simply saying their truth, their vision of situation, that will activate entire humanity. Then those leaders who are in this type of existence, trying to show change, how we can be different, they will be supported by entire humanity, not opposite way. This is what I'm saying. It's time to start to practice that. Because I yes, know. you're right. Yes. It, yeah, I, I hear uh, you and I agree. I agree with you, Irina. And I suppose I'm listening to you and thinking and feeling that in all of that, you know, and I agree with everything that you're saying, that we are really walking a walk where we're doing that, but we're also keeping an eye on self-preservation because we do live here in 3D after all. So we just can't put the noose around our own necks, you know, in our enthusiasm to make change and do whatever. So we're all the time sussing out you know, the temperature of, of what's around us, how how open are people to this and kind of drip feed and I'll give another little bit while watching ourselves and preserving ourselves in that process. Agree with you. So let's turn our remembering, becoming more conscious to protect that self-preserved part you see, mm -hmm. this is what I am saying. I will say it again differently. Let's start to use what we start to see and understand about world, about people around, how you can be heard, recognizing that. So let's uh, start to use our conscious awareness not to be heard, to protect mm -hmm. ourselves, but at the same time, not stopping ourselves from being good trouble. You see what I mean? Yes, Let's yes, put totally. our spirituality, our expansion, our skills of remembering to protect ourselves, but still continue being good trouble. You see, yes. this guy, Nick, I look at him um, breaking completely with his anger, this uh, um, 
tennis racket, yes? If he would have just one tennis racket, he would not do that. He would think about the tennis racket and not smash it because he was angry. But he already cre created pool of protection. He can buy hundreds of those rackets of good quality. Now he can use his racket to show I do not agree with that. I do Just, not agree with that. To and be honest, he, I, Irina, to be honest, yeah. Irina, so, so to interrupt you there. I, I'd almost go so far to say he is so authentically enraged when he is that he wouldn't give a flying fuck if he's got another record or yeah. not. He would just, but that's what makes him interesting to me. Because, because he's, he not interest, he's not interested in protection. He's not interest, interested in what, how does he come across? He is so authentically a troublemaker and he doesn't even know it. Yeah. In he my opinion, yeah. I, agree you, I agree with you, Martina, but in my opinion, my observation, he reached, he created for himself working hard that pool around him of protection that now he can be loud in his truth. Loud. He's loud in his truth. Not I think, but he still he has that thing that is uh, naturally now protecting him. Hmm. To, to be honest, I, you know, what I also saw with him and in the very beginning when he didn't have a field of protection, when because I, I watched him from the very beginning. And when I saw him in Wimbledon, I saw him on course and I thought, what the hell are you doing? And I was coaching tennis youngsters at the time. And I thought, Jesus, I need to, I, I, I actually, literally, I sent him a, 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 a what was it? An Instagram, of course, he never came back to me. I thought, you want to work with me? We can do something. I would have been so much fun to work with him. He never replied to me. But then I saw him off the court, how he interacted with the youngsters. He was absolutely amazing. He played with them. He gave them advice. He was sweet as pie. And I thought, wow, this is very interesting. Very interesting. He had a kindness. He portrayed a kindness that I haven't actually seen a lot in tennis players or anyone else. That, that was this real, hey, I'm really interested in playing with you, I'm with working with you, but I can't be bothered doing the rules and the authority and all this blah, blah, especially in Wimbledon, right? Now, I just want to say something. Mary said something. And what helped him, and Mary, you mentioned the support system, right? Now, mm -hmm. what he does have, that's what I've, I've seen for, if you want to call it protection or support, or, he has his family, and now he's got his girlfriend, and that made a huge difference. He didn't give a shit about the huge uh people the audience out there because for him it's actually fun to create some shit and he says it and he's very similar to somebody i live with because it's the same thing he loves creating waves right he loves creating waves and that's that active active troublemaker what you mentioned irena they are born like that mm -hmm. you know like uh exactly like trump Right. Well, look at Genghis Khan for that matter. All of those guys, they were all troublemakers, but they owned it. They claimed it. And I'm not saying for one second here that we all should be uh, Nick Kyrgios, yeah, or any of these people. But there is a little troublemaker or a bigger troublemaker within all of us. And let's not, you see, we perceive it as troublemaking, but in reality, they, it's an authenticity that we haven't allowed ourselves to live out, right? Spiritual or not, the majority of people that have that gift, as far as I'm concerned, are not even interested in spirituality. They're not interested in the mystical, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, I would, I agree with you. And I want to expand again a little bit more. Okay. When we look at Nick, you recognize he's human. And now when you look at people like another tribe troublemakers, we not all the time recognize human. 
in them. We see they are becoming part of machine. Yes. That is smashing everything and just continue rolling. This is what we came here to stop that machine and say, we don't like that thing anymore. We want to be human and we want to live in human-like uh, environment. And when we look at Nick and like him people, this is what we recognize. He is human. He connected to his heart, even in his anger. You see, yeah. even when he is in that not thinking, not evaluating what he is doing, but he is still connected to heart. I saw him. He is not doing even his smashing uh, all the time, like in front of people. Oh, he's he's going when he's to some on room. Well. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to some room, smashing. He is not directing that anger at anyone. It means he's still connected to heart. And when he is connected to heart with his level of, uh, I don't know, expansion he was born into, remembering conscious connection to this universe. He is connected to essence of this place through his heart. Like you, Martina said, through his family and now through his girlfriend, he is not losing. He never agreed to become part of machine. Yes. And machine recognizing in him this power, they were interested to turn him into their way, but he never did it. But at the same time, he was able using machine to accumulate his pool of protection, whatever it is for him, to stay human, to stay who he is, not becoming one of parts of this machine. So, you know, let me go back. Let me say something more to this uh, to this one match, the last one he played with uh, Djokovic, and Djokovic, obviously, he won. And there was a total acknowledgement and a tolerance between the two players. And Djokovic, obviously, having the rebel inside himself, having refined his level to, a, to, to an extent now that he doesn't have to play it out like that, right? Uh, it's just not not his choice because he wants to take his tennis play to a different level versus Nick, not necessarily. But there was almost a seeing between the two of them. You know, they played totally different styles, but they saw each other for who they were and they didn't they didn't fight that. They acknowledged each other and you know, for who they were. And I think in the end, when they shook hands, I was, it was one of the most beautiful scenes there because there was no, oh, I've lost now. I've learned so much through playing with you because you got the same rebel as I have, but you've obviously overcome it. Not overcome, but you have to, you put it now in a, in a you play it out in a much more, uh, sovereign you know way in a much more mature way you know so there wasn't a you can't play like this he didn't even react to him when he started playing like that and that immediately took the wind out of his sails you know because there was just like an acknowledgement between the two of them and they were actually really apparently good friends as well which I can totally see but then you know Djokovic I mean he's got an extended journey of of uh, spiritual you know advancement and he's work he's been working tremendously on on his game and obviously his his uh, authentic uniqueness at the same time now i can't say anything like, on what you just were sharing because i didn't see that much mm. i didn't see that game uh and it's hard for me uh, to understand what was happening there, but mm -hmm. I like what you are saying. No competition in a time in a in in a term of "I won, you lose." Yes, it was it was collaboration. I am this. I am this. It's my understanding what you are sharing from your sharing, and they were playing together, creating some dance together. 
Absolutely. That was that dance. Yeah. And I think this is so important to, to say, if we are liberating our quirkiness, our individualness, our true personalities, then, you know, so many people don't allow themselves to do that because they immediately think that, you know, just because they're getting a reaction from other people that there has to be competition or there's a fight and they don't want to go into that fight and they don't want to have controversy and confrontation. And this is no longer the time. It is no longer the time to hide because this individuation journey that we're all going through towards is the part of almost like challenging the domination and control authoritarian system that we are living at at the moment. And Martina, I just want to say as well, just on that, that one of the things that I see with Nick is that he has developed his genius. And because he has developed his genius, there is no need for competition. There is no winning or losing because the satisfaction of that is to play in that place of genius. And I think that, you know, that's the way that we do kind of, um, I don't want to use the word win, but that we do sort of overcome the system of domination and control by each of us developing that. And, and I think that that's, there, there's two things that stand out for me in relation to Nick, and that is the loving family that have always accepted him and supported him. That's why he can break rackets in public, because they don't care and he doesn't care. And also that led him to be able to follow his his genius and develop it and show it to the world. And he doesn't care. Of course, he'd like to win, perhaps, and get the money and get the trophy. But the enjoyment is in showing it. Absolutely. I, I would I would add to this. Uh, uh, this system in relation to system. Yes, we don't need to fight this system. We just need to understand, remember what system is, why we were working and creating that system. And now we we'll just turn into what is available for us now, not to fight this system. It will not bring us anywhere, anywhere. We will just uh, uh, make that system even stronger. But what he is showing, he is in the world, but not of the world, even in that very uh, little circle that is uh, being a tennis player. It's a very defined circle in my understanding. And they have their rules, they have their uh, mentality, they have their behavior types and everything. And he is just staying, being human and still being part of that game, of that tennis uh, society, tennis player society, he is showing I can participate and be active in who I am, not to sit at home and just like, you're not right, you're not right, I don't want to fight with you, I don't want to see you and sit at home. He is actively in this world, but at the same time, he is not losing his individuality, who he is, and he is not losing his humanity. And this is what is bringing us from being part of system to that creating dances with everyone. I want to create dance, being alive on earth. This is kind of like he's showing us how to step away from our old trauma that we got uh, in our previous experiences that we agreed not to act on what we knew about ourselves or being beaten uh, because we were doing that. It's a old traumas. We all have that. And he's showing way already how to step out for a lot of people it's not that easy to step out. You need to go through some healing process, more remembering and more working with where you stuck in your previous experiences in terms of this being who you are and acting on what you know about who you are. 
But for a lot of us, especially those who already did the expansion way, already they understand, already they became conscious about many things, uh, continue being active, not become spiritually polite. You see, it's not working. It's type of, in my kind, like uh, what I can name it, type of spiritual hijacking of part of humanity and part of humanity, we just became quietly observing, not saying anything, but we know inside it can be done differently. So uh, thanks for that, Irina. So let's actually look at that. Let's, we, we used to, Kyrgy to just come into the, the, to get the idea of what good, good with trouble, good trouble is. And please do check out his podcast because he always interviews people along those lines. And there's, it's a very, very cool dudes that he, that he actually gets on board there. So let's look at ourselves here because I mean, that's what this whole work is all about, looking at ourselves. So what, when we look at that now, and also maybe Marissa or Lana, if, if you want to chip in here, what makes you, you? Because again, we're going to go into this. This is the next era that we're moving into, the era of individualization. And when I say that, it's not just everyone on their own, but individualization to the extent where we can go into non-judgment, allowance, tolerance, whatever you want to call it, acceptance, if that's a word for you, and then start looking for the people that actually have their cup full too, so that two cups, two full cups can start creating beyond. So how are we going to get our cups full? What makes you, you? Look into your own lives now. Find your quirks. Maybe those quirks that actually other people find a bit irritating but it makes you authentically you. Have you come across that? Have you been shut down for those? Have you been told off to be too much you and you then probably bought it or not? I don't know. I certainly have. Yes, Martina, start, okay. start sharing because you have a long journey and you are bringing those pieces uh, how you actually were fighting those people around you who were trying to quiet you. And uh, you remember yeah. your way, how it was done in your situation, what other people around you did, and what you were walking through, what were your feelings, emotions, and uh, thoughts inside of you. Share, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so, go so far to say I was fighting because you know I didn't even get a chance to fight back. You know, as as a, as as me, you know, I was never asked what would you like. I was always told what I had to do, and uh, maybe the way it was um, demonstrated was not in a very kind way most of the times. You know, so my quirk has always been, I'm a very logical person. I'm very, I love working with my mental side to make sense of all of that. So one of my quirks is definitely, I can take anything in because I have a strong, strong capacity to look at the information and say, okay, what I'm going to do with this? My Ajna center yeah, is, is defined, very well defined because I can take information, transform it, reframe it, and turn it into a lesson. That's how I have always worked. Now, good trouble with that is that no matter what people do at you, they will never win. And that triggers them because it's almost like, I was always like, okay, give me more, give me more of that because I can work with this. I can do something with it. And yes, it messed me up as well, but there was this curiosity in that, you know? Uh, and I'm not saying for one second, this is the way it should be because there's other ways of, of working your awareness as well. But this is, I, this was my journey. And that irritated people even more because whatever they did to me, it didn't, it didn't make, it didn't, yes, I might have been crying, but it didn't, I never stopped. 
And this still irritates people. I'm like a dog with a bone. If I want something, I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I'll reframe. I'll find out, you know, and, and do it. So that's one of my quirks, you know, which was not easy for people to. And unfortunately as well, what it did to me is I kept attracting people that thrown challenges towards me because I was thriving of the opposition, of the duality, because it got me to where I am today. Now, I never, 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 never saw myself as a rebel. Never. Really. I was always the one, because I, if I would have known I was a rebel, I would have fought back. But I never did. I only now, I called everyone else a rebel. And if I look at my, in my family now, I'm the only one. I'm the only, only real rebel. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. So I made myself wrong for a long time because I thought there was something wrong. Why do people treat me like that? But with the liberation and the celebration of my uniqueness now, I can sit here now and claim my rebel, my revolutionary. And from now on, I can embody it. I mean, last couple of years already, but more and more now because I realize now that this is actually my purpose to be here, to say whatever I want to say, to say it in the way only I uniquely can express it. And people will not understand it. They, you know, it's always the other thing was always like, you're talking too much. You're talking too much. Shut up, shut up. So many times I'm talking too much. No, I have to talk. <laughs> this is my thing. And at the same time, I also know when to listen now. So that's just a little bit of what I've uh, I've just been thinking about. But like Irina said, the question is out to everyone. What what are your quirks? What are your? Can Can I ask you, Martina? Uh, yeah. So how how you would make that trauma? Uh, that you were having all the time until you understood and you stepped into who you are and start to act, how would you call that trauma? Trauma that uh, I was not allowed to speak or no one hear me, how would you call it? No one ever understood who, who I was. No one mm -hmm. ever even asked me who I was. You know, I, I mean, I had... I had capacity. I have capacities as a, as a generator. You know, my aura is so fucking big, and I've got, you know, that thing. I'll draw everything in. So I had no idea what I was doing. I just drew in all all the other people's crap, you know, and made it my own. I thought it was me. I thought I was wrong because I was told I was wrong all the time, you know. So I was continuously told everything was my fault, mm -hmm. and I believed it. Uh -huh. So trauma can be can be kind of like named. It's for people who listening to us to understand what they are healing, how mm. they come mm. to who they are. It would, I believe, would help them if we try to name our trauma, what was holding us back of being active good trouble. So in your case, uh, I, I, I can kind of like see, maybe I'm wrong, you correct me, that uh, I'm born in uh, not my environment. Uh, no one understands me. Uh, no one supports me. I don't feel love from environment where I am. And uh, I am quieted. I'm quieted. Um Oh, in my joy yeah, I'm not yeah. allowed to have joy of who I am being expressing who I am because no one understands me so it kind of like can help uh, those people who are listening to look at their position where they are now uh, how they can become uh, good trouble actively because this is what we need everywhere in all situation, not to cry uh, of about help or cry, I can do it. They are killing me. On well, time. that's the one thing I've never, I've never allowed myself to be a victim, but not uh, quite naturally, not not because I thought I had to. I didn't even realize I was a victim at the time, or allowed myself to play the the victim at the time. For me, it was just too much 
I was just too curious to see why would people react like that. I didn't understand it. And because of my mental need to having to understand it, observing my mind is an observer. It doesn't make decisions, but it's a huge observer and it has capacities to compartmentalize everything that uh, I'm, I, you know, everything, every experience has a different box and I put it in. And so I can use the drawers and open it up so I can process all that information. And because of the like amazing energy that I have, you know, and the focus that I have, but these, these are not trouble. That's not trouble. What, what I'm trying to say here is not good trouble. What I'm trying to say here is this is how it was knocked out of me or it was tried to have it knocked out of me. Now, the next level of that was then that I obviously left the country. That's when I started to sort of rebelling without really thinking I was rebelling. You know what I mean? So, and then I started to do my own thing. And and even until, you know, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I would have considered myself a rebel for any of that, everything I have done. Because for me, it is such a natural thing. Just like what, what you're saying with Nick. I mean, he doesn't see himself as a rebel. He was just perfectly normal. He just doesn't want to play the game the way everyone else plays it, you know? And this is sometimes why it is so important to actually spell it out. And look at designs and look at, you know, different characteristics and look at other how other people are organized because there is so much amazingness within us that we are not acknowledging. So you turn what other people experiencing as trouble because they surrendered. They didn't have that energy in them to move forward through that environment where they were born, you turn it into advantage. You made it your strong side. In the beginning, maybe unconsciously, but then it became your conscious process. And now you are celebrating. So this is, again, can show people that if you stuck in winding and you stuck in uh, uh, being victim, it's not bringing you anywhere. No, no, no. You're not, you're not uh, uh, using how you were born in this life, what become who you are actively. But if you can understand you are unhappy, you are kind like uh, on a side of being victim and stop that process and start to see how I can turn it in my strong side, how I can use that environment to heal myself and become who I am naturally, I am who I am naturally, what I was born, who I was born, then you are in your position while you were born on this earth. Exactly. So that's the liberation journey to liberating your uniqueness and then to acknowledge it. Exactly. And then from there, you know, it's... I wouldn't say easy breezy, but it's getting easier and easier and easier. So the question is out there for all of you guys is what makes you you? What are your experiences? What are your processes? What makes you you? Who wants to, to come in? Share some of the talents, the gifts that you have acknowledged for yourself and, and the quirkiness and, and the things that like I just did, like what people... Not all of them, of course, because some people love exactly that. This is why we're having our shows, right? And others don't. So who wants to come in and who wants to tell us what makes you, you? I don't mind coming in, but I just want to give other people a chance, Martina, if there's others that want to come in, because I've already been sharing, so... Is there okay. anybody else? Well, let's get Jen. Jen, just uh, unmuted. Jen, do you want to come in? Yeah, I'll, I'll share my quirkiness. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a lot the same as you, Martina, but also opposite of things. Um, I don't talk enough. I mean, when I was when I was a kid, I actually got evaluated for special ed because I didn't say a word for like two weeks. Um, like I just, I wouldn't have anything to say. I was very internal. And honestly, like I, I was just waiting on time to pass by. 
Um, but I had, so, so the last few years I've been working on myself to be more vocal and be more outspoken about things because I have, I believe that I have perceptions and perspectives that are worth sharing. Um, and I'm trying to be more expressive about who I am and how I feel about things. It's part of my journey, but also, you know, I have the same kind of traumas and programming about like I would have called it my wrongness program everything I do is wrong even though I don't do anything wrong I've never hurt anybody I don't say mean things to people I don't do things that aren't ethically right but still like I have that that perception that when something goes wrong I always look to see how it's my fault first and I would say a lot of that has to do with my upbringing and my relationships, but I also have been focusing more on just removing the distortion of how somebody making me feel like that once, like, triggered me into looking at it across the board when it wasn't intended that way. So, like, just that removing of distortion so that I don't hold the charge and the emotion of that and all of my memories that, like, to me, a lot of that self-created trauma. Um, yeah, I, the, the, the human design and the gene keys, I think, pair together almost identically. I've been working more on the gene key side of things, but studying my numbers a little bit more the last several weeks because I've been doing the activation retreat on the gene keys, I see how my relationships with other people are really where I learn my lessons rather than it being about myself. So people are really mirrors for me. Um, and I, I, I see how my interactions with people push me into what my next, my next phase of mastery is. And all of those reflections of, of the way something that somebody does hurts me or, or, disrupts me in some way like I reflect back inward on whatever that disappointment is like that's me having to make up that difference for myself in in the way of self-love and self-respect and understanding more of myself um so Jen you would probably have to if I asked you the next question you probably have to dig quite deeply because I want everyone to tell us here how are you a troublemaker because we all are. We so all how that. am I a troublemaker? I don't have to dig that deep for that one. Okay. Um, I don't really do things wrong, but I also don't do what people tell me to do. I cannot stand for people to tell me what to do. I'm always going to do it my own way. Now, I'm not outward about it. When somebody starts like giving me a list of demands and, and, and how they want me to do things, I'll smile and nod, and then I'll turn around and I'll go do it the way I want to do it anyway. But so in, in that respect, I am a rebel. I don't I don't follow directions very well. I always find my own way. And my own way is always different than how everybody else in the world would do it. But it works for me and I get it done. So cool. no. in that way, I'm a troublemaker. And also, I've always been a very free thinker. And I've always inspired other people to be very free thinkers so like don't just follow the norm don't just do what somebody tells you to do think about it and understand why before you do anything uh can i step in uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh i was listening to you jan uh, and thank you for sharing it's very interesting uh, and i was trying to put into some kind of definition uh what you uh, good trouble uh, how you overcame and turn around that maybe trauma from previous lives, uh, what you were sharing. So uh, I can summarize it, uh, what I could understand through your sharing, that uh, you turn around your relations with environment and people around you that wanted to make you uh, who you are really, your uh, uniqueness, into it is wrong because you were acting differently. Mm -hmm. Usually in human environment, we, we talk, 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 talk. But you, from beginning, you understood your way who you are. And in your uniqueness, you don't talk a lot. 
You just observe, you see, you, uh, you analyze maybe. And then when you feel I need to talk, you talk. But for people around you, it was wrong. And you already, with your actions, stay in your truth. You turn it around. And today, I wasn't sure, not many people around you who want to tell you what to do and who appreciate your observation, your quietness. Am I uh, clear what I'm trying to say? Yeah, all fair statements. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so again, it's for people who will listen to our show to understand that what Jen did, she was showing new way. This is who I am. And whatever you do around me, I'm not changing who I am. I will bring it very strong inside of me, maybe hold inside of me until time is right when I step completely into my power of who I am. But I will not allow you to change me because you think I'm wrong. Exactly. This is now, Arena, you tell us now, how do you piss people off? Yeah, uh, I was a uh, good trouble all my life from beginning. I was kind like going all the time against the flow again, like Jen, maybe like you, Martina, unconsciously. I was so honest in showing it's not that. This is what it is. It what This is what I was doing all my childhood. And again, I got into a lot of trouble because I was acting... Uh, unconsciously protecting myself not to be completely killed because mm. I was in everything showing this is not that this is how it is you name it this way but it's not that this is what it is I was showing from childhood all the time but my uh, biggest thing today what I discovered uh, and I was able when I became conscious when I was actually able to say thank you very much i'm not going your way i know how i need to go and i will find a way to be that because i was kind of like smashed in everything uh, i didn't remember who i am i couldn't for, uh, uh, put it into words i couldn't put it into action i was still feeling inside of me who i am but i was not allowed to be who i am and i said at some point and it was pretty scary fight almost like physical fight to say thank you very much from now on i will go on my own and will remember who i am and heal myself so i made that journey but recently i discovered this little thing like uh how i got into situation now realizing uh when you know stuff but you're not on a stage, you're not, you are on a stage, but you're not completely enjoying and feeling uh, relaxed being on a stage and presenting your truth, presenting what you already discovered, what you already remember, sharing that with people like a big audience, mm. you see? And this is what I discovered just recently, actually, I posted my little post in, uh, on uh, fa Facebook uh, about this type of uh, remembering uh, that a lot of people who are sensitive, who are uh, connected to this world deep inside, who are expanded naturally, we have problem uh, with... Uh, we enjoy, we are excited to know stuff, to discover, to open, but we don't have enough of excitement to be on a stage and share that. It's also, I think, you know, we have 70% or even more uh, of, of the population are, are generators. And there you come as a projector, you know, and <laughs> generators don't like to be projected on. <laughs> So that's the journey of, of, of all the projectors out there, right? Especially right. when they're going to positive systems. Hold on, I need yeah. to mute Herminia here. Hi, darling. Hi. 
So this is this is the tough journey. When when to know? And you always say, you know, when is my invitation? When when? And for 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 all the others, is it's really like. When is the time to respond? When is the time to influence? When is the time to ask a question? Is the timing right? And also, I think the biggest thing for all of us is, you know, all educators, your influencers is, are we speaking to people who are willing to hear what we've got to say? And this is why this is so lovely to have a group like this, because people who don't want to hear it wouldn't come on. <laughs> It's like we have a free permission slip here and we're all you know in in allowance of whatever you know because everything is a very interesting uh you know perspective that people bring in so thank you for that arena so next one we've got i a couple didn't finish i didn't finish i didn't right. finish and you said uh generators uh what is percentage about 70 percent of the 70 percent of those yeah of those people who stubbornly Traumatic stubbornness. They have traumatic stubbornness, and oh, they know. I'm not sure what the how the projector doesn't fit into that. One moment, one moment. Let me say it, and then we will discuss. <laughs> because a lot of people traumatically stubborn, they know inside they need to hear some stuff, but because of the trauma, some trauma, they become like a stubborn, and they are not hearing in that state. It's traumatic stubbornness. It's not knowing who I am and moving through life in that vibration, complete total connection to universe, to mother earth, to essence of this place. It's contrary. It's you are stubborn and continue moving because you are traumatized and now you don't want to be traumatized anymore and you become stubborn. This is the difference. We can recognize uh, good trouble and rebel trouble who are still proving something, but without connection to essence of this place. Yeah, and that's a lovely thing. You, you, you and your heart, you always bring the heart forward. And this is the lovely thing. Once the ego that is connected to the heart has no longer anything to prove, then we're on the right track, right? Okay. Now, thank you very much. Now, let's move on. We've got a couple of new, new, new peeps here. Uh, what is the question? We want to know how you put, how you piss people off. Simple as that. Tell us how you piss people off. What's your gift? Mary, you said you you got a few things. Come, show us how you piss us off. Or well, we don't get pissed off easily, but others maybe. We can't hear you, but perhaps mute. No, I'm, I, I'm unmuted now. All right. Um, it, it ties in actually a lot with what you and Jen had, had shared earlier because there was that silencing and... And because it was so important for me to to speak and to say what I thought I knew and to say what I was observing and all of that. So I would have experienced a lot of silencing in my childhood it, through the system and through my family as well, because I come from a quite a big family. So there certainly wasn't room for everybody to speak. So I think that because of that, I learned how to always recognize my response, my inner response. And I learned how to acknowledge that and value that. Sometimes I didn't like myself because of what I could see or know. And I would have thought that it was great if you could live life not seeing that. I remember feeling that at some stage when I was very young. But I, I got over that and I actually got to learn to love my inner response, to love the way that I interact with the world, actually. And I don't want to be anything else but that. While at this stage in my life now, I think that there would be a part of all of the others in me at this stage because of the fact that I would have done a lot of kind of self-reflection and healing throughout my life. But Really, I suppose what pisses me off is either that I would say too much or too little, or probably piss other people off, is that I might say too much or say too little, and that I might be sitting there just not saying anything, and they're thinking, what the hell is she thinking? 
So you can't and, win, right? You can't win. You said too much. They yeah, can't I know. I said I can't win. win. <laughs> but, but I'm actually quite comfortable with this. I am really, you know, I, I no longer have the compulsion to respond and to speak. And if that opportunity arises, and you said it beautifully there earlier too, Martina, there was something you were saying. can't remember now, but I remember when you said it, I thought, yeah, that's what I was trying to say earlier about you know the self-protection because at this stage because as well i operate from the sacral which is a gut energy i give completely a hundred percent you know to anything i'm giving to so the self-protection for me has always to be and this is something i've learned as i've got older that I have to watch the pushback because I don't want to be wasting my time having to transmute that anymore because that's hard work and that takes up an awful lot of time. So I I do consider, you know, what I put out there and how I put it out. And, and that's verbally because I'm putting out there and, and how I'm putting it out is does that's happening too, you know, physically and vibrationally. But I do consider how much trouble I want to draw on myself that is of no benefit to me or anybody else. So, again, I'm using the word wisdom because that's what I feel has has come in as I have got older. And I don't know. I mean, do, what pisses people off about me now? I'm not quite sure. I mean, I was more sure of what it was when I was younger, but I'm not quite sure of what it is now. And, you know, to say, to be honest, I'm not quite sure I care either. Actually, yeah. <laughs> that's where we all want to go to. We have yes. to proof. We don't care if we piss yeah. off. That's okay too. Because yes, it's it is a, okay. It's a facilitation. We just yeah. instead of saying I'm pissing you off, I'm facilitating you. So this is a good. Yes. Tip tip for everyone if somebody gets pissed off so, oh you don't want to be facilitated <laughs> but well I, i'd be very open to discussing it with anybody if i'm pissing them off like like tell me how i am you know and all of that but people won't go there usually you know they just don't um but yeah i think that's kind of it martina really that in is, a nutshell yeah. i don't think i'd like to hear yeah. from other people now okay yeah. Great. Who else? Who else wants I to love Mary. Can, can I say a couple of words? I love Mary. What tool you develop to be quiet and no one understand why you are quiet at that time. I believe this is how you piss people around. You are <laughs> probably quiet. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. The shit out of us. Yeah, by being quiet. You're such a manipulator. <laughs> It makes people uncomfortable. It makes people uncomfortable because they don't understand why you're not talking and why you're not participating in like spewing garbage, right? Because a lot of people just talk and they don't think about what they're saying or like the ripple effect of what they're saying. And so it makes but, people uncomfortable when you can sit there and you can be reserved and you can just witness. And you, you see, the to... thing is, and you know, Jane, I just want to share with you, the thing about that is, and I, I know people look at me and think, well, why is she just sitting there? Like, why isn't she saying something? But the thing about it is from where I'm sitting, I have nothing to say, really nothing to say. That's right. And somebody Thanks. asks me, what, well, Mary, what have you to say about that? I'm thinking, what am I going to say? Because I don't have anything to say. So it's really... It, it, I don't know. It's a strange situation because other people seem to be able to talk and talk and talk. And I don't seem to be able to do that at all. I just seem to have a few things. I say them and then I'm quite happy to sit back. But I find everyone so interesting. <laughs> I know. Right. But, but yeah. you see, you're doing it not because you want to manipulate, but anyone because you're doing it from your wisdom to be protected and not to ruin your comfortable place how you choose to be in this world. I don't know, right. Irina. I don't actually know if, if I do do it like that. And I'm not disagreeing, but I'm not agreeing either because I don't think that it's a mental process. I think mm -hmm. this is very much a gut process. So that's why the gut doesn't have any words because it doesn't know. It just knows that. I have nothing to say, but I don't have anything else to add to that. Do you know what because I mean? If I, if I can jump in here. Came. I mean, not, 
Uh, okay, Lana is, is found her voice. Come on, Lana. Speak. Come on, Lana. Yes, I please. I just, <laughs> I just want to say, Mary, I agree with you completely because I find myself oftentimes in the same situation where I'm amongst people and they're speaking and they can talk nonstop and they can talk about whatever they want to talk about. And I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm just an observation. I have nothing to say to them. I don't have anything to add to what they're saying. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I'm more on the yeah. quiet side. Uh, I would listen. Um, um, for example, I was at a, uh, someone's retirement party over the weekend and it was at a, a pub. And so we went and I realized that um, everybody was talking to each other, but what they were talking about I had nothing to contribute because they were mostly talking about their work because they all work in the, for the same place and I don't work with them. So I have nothing to contribute to that conversation. And they were switching from sports to work, sports to work, sports to work. And I found it quite amusing after I realized what was going on, you know, and like, oh, heck, I have nothing to contribute to these people to the conversation that's going on so what am I supposed to do I just sit sit back and be quiet and in observation I'm thinking to myself well I have a lot to say but it's not work it's not about work what they're talking about it's not about sports um, so I needed someone that can talk with me about the things I'd like to talk about I don't want, like to talk about sports because I don't really follow sports a lot. I follow some of it, but not a whole lot. But then, um, as I said, I don't work in the environment that they work in. They all work for the same place. So I had nothing to contribute to that. So who am I supposed to talk to? <laughs> what am I supposed to talk about? So you just sit back and listen, you know, and you keep a smile on your face. And if somebody says something to you, you just nod and say yes or no or contribute a sentence or two and then um they go back to what they were talking about work in sports <laughs> does that help <laughs> it does yeah it does. i know can I, can I add? okay you add arena yeah, sorry it just <laughs> you add to that. Just my <laughs> scene is uh trouble solving this is who i am my master of trouble solving uh -huh. so I just want to add to you guys, Mary and Lana, what and Jen, what you were sharing, sharing with your being quiet, because you already came in this life with your wisdom of remembering connection to source. You don't need to discover that thing. It's inside of you. That's why people uh, perceive you like you know stuff. You must know stuff. You need to say something. But it's only that wisdom of connection to source that you are translating. Yes. Can I add oh. some more? Go, Jen. I, I, when Mary was talking about it, it reminded me of another thing that I do that makes people mad. So the the graphic that you sent to the group chat yesterday made me laugh because I'm a 2-4, right? So uh, it, it was easy breezy something, right? And people yes. get really mad. Yes. Yeah. Easy breezy, there you go. Yes. Uh, people get mad at me because they say I make everything look so easy. But yeah. to me, like, easy is right, right? And it's not like I don't put an effort. If you knew me and you saw me at home, like, I never sit still. I'm always doing something. I put in the effort to life, but I don't focus on the struggle. I just get shit done. So whenever something comes up, I can just see the stuff, like, steps to get shit done. And I don't bicker about it. And I don't talk about how much I've done. I just do it. And it really infuriates people because they want to experience a struggle and they want things to be hard. And so they create hardship where it doesn't, it's not necessary. And so I thought that that was really, like, that really made me laugh when I saw it yesterday. Because one thing that people always get irritated with me is that I make things look so easy. And it's not that I didn't have to do anything for it. It's just, you take care of things. And I think that plays into a lot of what we as generators do, we just know how to take care of things. We know how to get stuff done. Well, having said that, I'm getting really pissed off now, Jen, with, with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm one of those three fives who has to go through trial and error in order to learn. You know what I mean? The good thing is, though, that I don't care about mistakes. You know, I love mistakes. For me, I don't understand what a mistake is. It's just something you learn. But, you know, I I totally get it. And this is exactly, guys, what we want to hear. That's good fucking trouble. You know, she's stepping into her uniqueness of being this easy breezy, you know, generator, genius gen generator. It, it, It undoubtedly pisses people off, you know, because it just throws it in their face how easy life can be if you so choose or if... And, you know, the ones that get pissed off are the ones that have the capacity to step into exactly that easy breezy genius, because the other ones wouldn't even be in your vicinity. Yeah, it's almost like what you look at looks back at you. So don't forget that. I'm not saying saying we've all come here to, to be easy breezy geniuses, but the ones that are in your signature frequency and see that and get pissed off with that, they are the ones that have it in them. And that's what makes you the teacher, that makes you the rebel, that makes you the good trouble. And you don't even know it. You're just doing what you're doing. Good. What more? Tell me, guys. What? How do you piss people off? Because that's, you know, that's, we need to acknowledge that. Because how many times has Jen probably made herself wrong for that in the beginning of her journey? Yeah. Just like I've made myself wrong by reframing every fucking thing and talking about it and analyzing it into the into the, the the last bit because you know I just love having awareness or ask millions of questions. It's very annoying to people, and of course, also another thing that just came to mind as you're speaking, Jen, is like the trial and error. I I learn through trial and error because I'm the great life's advent experimenter. For me, it's all experimentation. So I have no capacity of reading instructions. Absolutely impossible. It pisses me people either. off. It pisses people off because you know I have to have five attempts to get it right. And to to the one who says, "Why don't you read the fucking instructions?" I don't do that. And I love yeah, not doing it. <laughs> and you know what? Me too. I have to start putting it together, Martina, and my husband has to sit for a week reading booklets before he can even <laughs> open the box. <laughs> and, you know, it is so much fun to actually, you know, yes. acknowledge your quirkiness. And even if it drives other people up the, the trees, you know, it's... That is fun. That's the little rebel that we have all within ourselves. If we are not looking at it from the wrong perspective, just be who you are. And if you love reading instructions, you should be in my life. You should be living with me because you should be reading instructions. You know, this is the thing where we then start looking for the people, not in order to complete ourselves, but just to make our lives fucking easy, easier easy breezy because we don't have to do it all by ourselves and this is the interesting thing and just want to say one more thing before i pass the uh, talking stick on to karen because she hasn't said anything what's more and more coming in in this getting out of authority in this getting into that new era of um interaction through individuality and stuff what's more and more getting important instead of having to protect the shit out of ourselves is Get rid of the peeps that don't understand who you are, that don't vibe with you if you don't like to use the word understand. They don't feel you. They don't, you know, this is more and more important. It's not about having a thousand people listening to our shows, but five people coming on to the show. We're creating more with that instead of having to think of every single fucking word word that we are actually saying. Because we're supposed to be in the flow, 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 flow. Okay, end of my flow. Who is next? Who wants to tell us? How Me, you- before oh. I go. <laughs> tell ready. Us when- hey. Can you hear me? Lovely to see you. Oh, I'm on the phone, so I'll be probably moving. Well, do we have time to to maybe name how many times we piece people off? I mean, I'm not aware either. But um, I think we have been talking about it, like there may be because of resonance, some souls that they just, in my case, because of my chatty, lively freedom, you know, like I also feel recognized in Jen, they tell you, sister, I cannot follow you, you know, like it's like you have the capacity to go from one topic to the other and 
while there are others, like they follow me completely and we can have a beautiful conversation and we enjoy ourselves and we laugh and there's no point of judgment or labeling at all. And we have recently, funny thing, talking about it, as we always say, about this, no, like a stigmatization in which we say you are different, no, and so then uh, because you are different, I label you or you seem to be wrong. And we are not here to please absolutely anybody, no society, no our parents. And um, I think we do have to encourage ourselves to re be hundred percent ourselves in this gem we are. And if we are teachers, if we are guides, to help each other see that it's nothing wrong, actually is beautiful. I think the weirdest, uh, quirky, you know, the most beautiful because it's a unique, no? And we don't even have to be the black sheep. We can be the rainbow or any other color. So um, I think so. I think that can come into the, the space. And a brother asked me yesterday, um, how come you never get into feeling bad? Like, you know, like, oh, I was not understood. I was not heard. I was not welcome in any circle. Probably because of my personality, I never felt outside any circle. Because either that you created with yourself or you created with somewhere that is going to come in resonance. And that was since I was little. I will always be in any circle because people will be, you know, little children or whomever in my teenagehood, adulthood, younger one, let's say if so, that comes to your energy. And we are not going to be pleasing or be attracted to absolutely everybody's energy. And it's so good, you know, to have different tastes and flavors and aromas. So in that sense, I think I've never felt um, outcast <laughs> at all. And a lot of, you know, people from art, for example, not to mention awakening or whatever, we feel outcast, you know. But we are used to <laughs> at the same time. So in that sense, yeah, he wants to go flashy. <laughs> In that sense, um, yeah, I mean, he's really pushing me, like telling me, Mama, I need to go. But what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, um, I think in that sense, if we as parents or as, as guys, if we are teachers, help anybody not to feel like that, an outcast, everything is just fine. And that is the, the, the issue, I think, in terms of society. Actually, me, I have been labeled by teachers because I will be this speaker to my students, no matter the age. And I will be judged, you know, by colleagues or, or even telling me, but it's not that easy in the society, you know? It's not, maybe it's in your bubble world, but not for them. So that will feel restriction. And then depending on the age of the students, also this kind of judgment, you know, depending on where you will be teaching, if it's in the city, open city, or if it's in a town, how they will be open to receive, uh, be unique, you know, and uh, be the authenticity that they can be um, because it's a life discovery. So I, I can say this and this brother, and with this, I wrap it up. He was asking me what helped me and I say, I suppose my parents never restricted me, judge me or say, you have to be like this or like that. There was something there, but not really an art. You know, art, creativity gives a lot of freedom. And we never stop being childish, if the case, uh, if you want to play full with life. So I think I think that is, and definitely pieces of, I think, depending on what state of consciousness people are. So if they are more depressed or dark in their moments, totally respected they would feel maybe trigger, you know, as you were just mentioning. And that is what may piss them off. But also, I don't really care and <laughs> respect. I mean, we just leave, no? But um, yeah, beautiful mirrors anyway. And I'm complete. I'll be on my way and, and listening again. All right. All right, Karen. Thanks very much for sharing. Abrazos. And that's Yay. beautiful. Beautiful. You know, she's good trouble with being joyful. And how many people get pissed off when she's joyful, right? How many people get pissed off when you are in your joy because they can't match it? They can't join in, right? So it's a very good, good trouble trait to have. Amazing. Marisa, do you want to come in? Yes, I'm actually at home today. <laughs> Fabulous. Tell us how you yeah. pick people off. Um, I'm just very me um and I think people love me for me but then they're also like I'm different um whether I'm with my people or with work people 
I just stand out. Uh, so it's just the, uh, I guess, getting used to me. So it's like a, it pisses them off in the ways that they love me at the same time. You know, uh, just um, I have ideas and I take action on them. Um, I just allow myself to be guided. Uh, so not per the rules, you know. So um, stepping out of boundaries, doing things differently, um, just by being me. So, it's, um, and then in communication wise, uh, like how other people communicate is like, uh, I'm also one of those, sometimes I have a lot to say. When I have a lot to say, I say it and I flow, but otherwise I kind of just sit back and um, observe. Uh, so when it's time, it's time, you know, uh, but the pissing people off thing, I think is just by being eccentrically me um, and just showing up as I feel fit and um, like letting things flow in, in an organic way. And then just, I think it's just the, wait, that's different. Why are you always doing things different kind of thing? It's not a verbal out loud thing, but it's just like, there she goes doing something different again, you know, uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, but they kind of know that about me. And it's like, I don't necessarily try to be different. It's just, I just am. So that's roughly it's, it. It sounds like that surrender, that inner guidance, that divine timing and all of that, what I'm hearing through all of this, that can set people off, you know? I mean, yeah. they want to call you as a troublemaker, obviously as such, but it, it it triggers it triggers other people who have exactly the same within their capacities but haven't really claimed it yet. So yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Love to be here. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Now that was the other question. What you know, how are you being you? You know, what what makes you you? And you know. We so often go to the outer authority asking these questions to, you know, uh, why do you love me or what do you want me to do in order to be this or that or, you know, and at the end of the day, it's just because we haven't asked ourselves who we are, what makes us alive. And I think that's, that's a total, a different, you know, like show here because we can talk about interacting with ease or you know having uh, an allowance for other people but does that really mean that you are completely alive by doing that does it really like switch you on get that fire stokes that fire within you that we all have we don't have to be it all the time we're all being the silent mountains uh, at some stage and and the joy junkie on another side and all of that um but what really gets you going so that we can start creating more good trouble from a from a really not necessarily you know triggering other people but really not worrying about other people so many people said that i don't really care what other people think you know uh, i don't really care if that's the place where we need to get to it's and it's the wrong way of it's like oh caring has been so misunderstood you know it's okay if people don't get us it's okay if people find us offensive. And that's why I sometimes I swear. And it just, I don't do that on purpose. It just comes out because there's a certain energy that I'm sort of, uh, I don't know, transmuting or something. I don't even know why I'm doing it, but this is who I am. And the I want to say, yeah. say something else, Martina. Oh, One yeah. of the things that I find that the topic is good trouble, right? Causing yeah. good trouble in the world. And one of the things that I find over the years um, in, in, in causing um, the fact of good trouble, you can say, is that when you show kindness and love, follow with love, right, um, towards others, there are so many that may observe what you're doing and don't like it. But that's a good thing for the world. To show kindness to others, followed uh, with a smile, you know, and then the love flows. And I, I remember um, 
years ago when I was working for this one boss, um, I used to treat the customers like that. I used to show them kindness and uh, smile and, um, you know, with whatever authentic love I could um, share in the situation. And I remember the boss, she used to be very upset with me um, all the time. She wouldn't want me to take care of the customer because of that fact. She wouldn't say it in words, but I know that's the reason why, you know, um, she would react to the way she did reacted. Um, but they didn't want to um, communicate with her because she didn't show that affection to the, towards them. So they never would come to her. I mean, I worked for her. She was the boss and the owner. Um, but the customers would want to deal with me and not with her. And I see that in, in this topic here as good trouble. Yeah. As a good troublemaker, yeah. you know, that okay. caused that reaction, you know, in not a good way from her. And that Absolutely. used to create a lot of friction between us. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, Thanks for sharing because you bring in the love, you bring in the kindness. Yes. Uh, Marissa was talking about the surrender, the freedom, the divine guidance. Then we have the joy, Karen. Mary, the stillness, the knowing when to speak, you know, nothing to prove. Uh, you know, I can't remember all the other, oh, the easy breezy, of course, and then what whatever Irina said, I can't remember now. But all of this together just shows us that we call it good, we call it trouble for some, but in reality, it's where we want to go, right? It makes the world, it makes the world a better place. You know, yeah. it makes, when you show kindness uh, with a smile, the love flows and the world, the whole world, if more people would do that, the whole world would be a better place for everybody. The timeline would shift to be a better timeline altogether. Yeah. So it is really important for us, no matter who perceives us as trouble, to step into and claim those capacities, those gifts, those talents, those quirks. <laughs> And a great way of, of, of um, working with that is just consider yourself a rebel, a love rebel, a freedom rebel, a joy rebel, right? A stillness rebel, you know, all of that. And just because that just helps you to maintain that energy and keep generating that energy. And then whoever is able to receive it, willing to receive it, they can participate and share that auric, you know, sort of field together. And the others can stay away and stay out. Well, eventually, eventually oh. they'll come, they'll, they'll recognize what you're doing when they've learned enough in their uh, life path. And they would realize that what they've been seeing others doing, they'll come to that conclusion, hey, I better change myself. Yeah. to make this world a better place because as you get older you get wiser no matter what right? <laughs> you have to have gained something throughout your life um, you can't go through from age zero to 90 and not gain some wisdom right absolutely yeah. come yeah. in here. yes come in no no i just want to follow up what you said that we are troublemaker but i don't see in that point of view we are just different like Lana said, uh, Lana said, and uh, the thing is because we have in our society this illusion that we had to be, everybody had to be the same that I had in my mind that supposed to be, because we are so conditioned that the other people had to behave and uh, and do the thing the way I want them to do or the way that I want them to behave, because we had that um, march or command that say well you gotta behave this way because that's the, the right way it's like a conditioner society and uh and i had my own case like my daughter she get very mad very easy and then when i smile then she get more furious because <laughs> i cannot get mad but for her well, that's that's a killer for her because she said i cannot talk to you because of how soon i smile then she gets more furious and then she got more mad. And then, and then what they say, I cannot help her, I cannot get mad. <laughs> you know, and then I don't see like it's a problem. It's just I'm, like we don't match, we don't match in reaction. 
seeing yeah. the world the different perspectives. And then I don't think that we are troublemaker. We are just different, and the other people are expecting for us behave, and in a specific way for them is normal. You know, that's that's the illusion that we have in this planet. Everybody expecting for other people behave the way how we think is the best from their point of view. You know, that's that's the way I see it. <laughs> and and you're absolutely right. That's why we call it good trouble just to show the twisted way of how we are perceived, how some people are perceived when they're making so-called trouble. And in reality, it's actually a facilitation and a gift to everyone around us. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that's why it's sometimes so, so it's, it's useful to know how other people are organized, you know, what their strategies are and, and all of that. It doesn't have to be a human design thing because, you know, we all have a level of awareness in order to know what makes other people tick, right? And it doesn't, you know, and for instance, another example here is I'm solution oriented. So when, when somebody comes with a problem, I have no emotion about it. I immediately go, okay, what, what are we going to do with this? How can we change it? What's the solution for that, right? Now that pisses off my daughter in particular because I'm cutting out her grieving process. She comes in, all she wants to hear is nothing really. She just wants to talk and me listen. But I'm so organized, I immediately, when I say organized, I am designed that way that I immediately come up because the problem is there is no such thing as a problem for me because it's all trial and error, you know, it's all like, okay, cool, let's work with that. And some people just want to grieve, they just want to be listened to. So I know that now, you know, and I either warn her and say, okay, is there a question in any of that? Do you want me to help you with this? Or must I just listen? She says, no, just listen. I said, okay. So, you know, yeah. so you honor yeah. yourself, you know, you honor yourself and your yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, and other people want you to get engaged in their drama. Because that's the yeah. way they soak the energy from other people, go from drama to drama. They always talking about the drama that they have because they're looking for the petty feeling from other people. It's, it's you know, it's the way how we manage to um, soaking energy from one another. <laughs> and, and when you are aware of your uniqueness and the way you operate, you know, then protection falls away I don't have to protect myself anymore from any of the energies that she brings in because I'm not taking them on I'm just the listening I'm just the observer there you know and I I my mind for me the way I use my mind I use my mind as the observer it's the observer and the accountant so everything that comes in it gets you know checked out through my through my throat through my through my third eye and i put it into the various oh there's a lesson this i can use this for another teaching i can use this for a client i can use it for this you know and for me so everything that comes in is useful you know that's what remind me the professor celestine when they okay. explain about how we're going one around one another you know how you know, like a plucking other people, uh, how we get fitted energetically. Some people with PT, other people very aggressive, other people poor on me, you know, other people fighting. It's, it's like, it's unique, like, like uh, the design. It's just like a signature, how I get energy from other people. <laughs> That's the way I can see it right now, that you are talking. Because yeah. it's everybody looking the way how they can get plugged in. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I wanted to chime in on that, uh, Arminia. Um, uh, like in the workplace, there's uh, one individual in particular uh, who likes to bring up a drama or like a, a little problem or something that's happening, whether in the world or something within the workplace. And I feel like sometimes a few sentences would do on yeah. addressing the thing. But mm -hmm he rambles and continues and then <laughs> the loop and just keeps on going. So this is just the way this character works. And uh -huh. he, he's a beautiful person, but that's just the way he works, you know, and he's, he's a very much of a talker. Like he just like, t likes talk, you know, <laughs> yeah. about something. Sometimes yeah. it's about words. It's like, okay. Uh, so I really learned to just disengage. And there are some people like who like they, he starts talking to them and I could tell they're not interested anymore. 
but they kind of feel almost an obligation to stay there and like almost like you started this conversation with me and then they're like oh when he starts that like I just simply like walk away or like move to the side like I just yeah. show all the cues like go to something else I'm just like I'm yeah. over here you know yeah. I like I may be known I, I might be near you but I'm not listening. I'm not <laughs> going to that. I'm not like three sentences, you know, you know, I mean, it's just like going on and on and on. It's like, yeah. I heard you the first little bit. So <laughs> I just don't engage. And I think some people have caught on a little bit. Yeah. On that. Because, and they're yeah, learning yeah. how to navigate mm-hmm. that. I just wanted to mm-hmm. share that. Yeah, because they can feel it. Even if you don't say anything, they can feel it that you don't pay attention. <laughs> because it's, it's an energetic connection. He doesn't get the, the this guy. Yeah, he doesn't get the whole world plugging. <laughs> Some people That's really what? just like to express, you know, <laughs> and he's so expressing that he's sometimes unaware that the people just want to keep on going, but he's just so into expressing that he doesn't get, he doesn't, he's not very aware of that yet. And and some of the people they they don't looking for you to give you any advice or anything. They just want to keep the drama going. Because that's the way that how they can bring attention to them. Because they are desperate to get attention and that's looking for drama. Anything that happens is they make like a, a comp- completely like a nightmare because they're looking for that way how to st- stay in your energy. It's an unconscionary way to do it, but that's the drama that we're living in. Really. Armenia, I, I know somebody like that. I have a friend, she's very kind, um, nice person. But whenever I I run into her, she would always um, talk about every single thing that she can think of and all her problems. It's like psychically vomiting all the time. And I realized that you said something just now. She's not looking to solve a problem. She just wants to psychically vomit all the time on whomever she's talking to. And so when I, I run into her, I have to discipline myself. And sometimes I would get to the point where I will be very um, uh, assertive with her, you know, and I would, I would suggest to her how to solve a problem and she would listen, but then she would like continue on again. And she yeah. would really not need your, <laughs> your answer to solve her problem, but she, she would get to the point where I would be a little pissed off already, you know, like, why are you doing this? I mean, there is a way to solve this problem. <laughs> you remember this, uh, Lana, you remember the song, don't go, please don't go, stay in yeah. the <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, so we heard, uh, you know, like uh, Marissa was saying, she walks away. I mean, that's, that's tough. You I know. do that too. I walk away. That's after right. I had enough of her. Right psychic vomit I just like say you know what I gotta go I, I yeah. got stuff to do <laughs> exactly manipulate yourself out of it by saying yeah. that you have to do something that's positive manipulation absolutely Karen says you know um her, her partner just keeps nodding and she knows okay he's just going into the puppet state now he's not really listening my partner disappears out of his body all of a sudden I'm just speaking to the bodies nobody there anymore I'm like okay <laughs> those and another way of doing it is like you know um asking a question that's a very powerful way of doing it so yeah this is really interesting even if it's not you know interesting so uh, how are you gonna you know resolve that because that throws those uh, psychic vomiters the the quickest when you put the ball back into their court so how what what would it take or, or you know those typical you know questions yeah. what would it take for you that's so very I, certain I, I, yeah. I wanted to say something here too because they put you in a position right these people they put you in a position where um you have to turn around and say you know i got something to do i gotta go even though you know that that's not a true statement that you're making so they're putting you into in a position where you have to actually lie in order to get out of being in the conversation with them. And I find at times that I want to be my true authentic self. I don't want to lie about anything because there's always a, a, 
uh, an opposite uh, reaction when you do that. You'll find that something will will show up to say, well, you know, that's not authentically you. And so um, I would find ways how to um, say, yes, I have to leave, but try to be honest about it, you know? Um, so that's something also that, that we have to pay attention to, you know, when we are confronted with situations like this. Well, you, you have other choices. You can do a Marissa, just walk away, say nothing. <laughs> I just, that's, but yes, I, um, like this. That's yeah, also kind of rude, you know. <laughs> Irina's got another idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, you see, I completely with you, Lana, because it's not everyone's way. It's not everyone's personality way, uh, like Marisa is doing, because it's you have to be pretty strong to do what Marisa is doing. And a lot of human beings, we actually stuck in our fear to be hurt or hurting someone else and then being responsible for what we did. So this is kind of like to avoid that. There is a wonderful tool that you can use. Name of that tool, controlling folly. I call it controlling stupidity. Uh, and it looks like this. You are completely acknowledging what you are feeling. Like, for example, Lana, it's like, uh, I completely hear you. And uh, I see you are in trouble, but at the same time, I see if I say you how to resolve your trouble, you will attack me or you will ignore me and I will feel furious. <laughs> I will be like this, like this, like this, like this. And you say it out loud to that person and that person will be stopped in their shoes and kind of like uh, not vomiting at you anymore, but you are not feeling bad at that time you are in your compassion but at the same time you are saying everything you feel you don't hold it inside you don't make trauma inside of you but you're giving in this very stupid uh, way to know that person that i am not your vomiting scene anymore if you come to me this is what i will do and then you just uh uh, make that situation not happening for you anymore. And it is so funny and it is uh, so relaxing for everyone. And you are not accumulating any, uh, um, um, you know, that uh, Drama. density inside of you at that time. And you really, you look stupid at that time. But you're doing it controlling. You are controlling yourself because you are not attacking that person you're just saying how you feel in that but situation sometimes what I, what what you do also is change the conversation turn it around it's kind of like hiding to something this is that kind of like is hiding. interesting no you just change so they can shut up you change the conversation to something that you are more interested in in talking about because then they don't have to continue telling you things that are irrelevant even for you to be listening to because this person would say things that is so irrelevant to for me to even know, know about because it has nothing to do with me. It will not do anything for me. It's just her personal life stories of different situations that she's in. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to like change this and talk about something else so that she wouldn't continue to, to spew out what she's, you know, wants to at all times, you know? So but I if find that helps helpful. But and I walk you, away and then I forget about everything she said because I don't take it in. I don't allow it to be a part of my day. You know, she said it and it's gone. It's done. <laughs> it's just in the moment that when you're with her. <laughs> but if you want to structure your life from what you want in your life, not all the time pinpointing what you don't want and structure your life from what life bringing at you, but from inside, how you want, that can connect you with, you actually may, not you personally, Lana, but someone um, actually have like fear inside to say, to say your truth, or maybe you uh, not, um, 
and you don't want to address that fear. That's why you kind of like protecting yourself all the time, not being who you are, not structuring your life from inside, but all the time from your reaction. And that person and person like those people will come to you all the time and using you like a shoulder all the time, uh, doing what they think they allow to do and what they allow to themselves to do. But we can be in a position understanding everyone, not trying to hurt anyone, but at the same, not living our lives. We have to watch that turn. That's why this stupidity thing, control and stupidity, so beautiful. You kind of like starting to go out from your cage of fear uh, that you can do something wrong or someone will not receive you right or whatever. But at the same time, you're not accusing those people. You're just ex expressing what you feel in a moment. Do you know what, uh, Irina, that reminds me of when a child is having a tantrum and instead of having a conversation with it to stop, you just get on the floor and do exactly the same because that's exactly how you feel at the time. You just want to front play. <laughs> so you get on the and have a tantrum with it, right? Just match. So matching the energy, right? Just bringing energy from inside, outside, not to make any dense accumulation inside of you that later can become trauma. So, but in this controlling stupidity, you do like that child, but you're controlling because you're already adult, you're already conscious, you already have adult part to be in this world. And you do it from that adult part, acknowledging your child inside. Yes, not hurting that child inside, but at the same time, not hurting anyone around you. I tried that, uh, I use that tool a lot in my life. Works per perfectly. It brought me through so many stuck points in my behavior, just unbelievable. And you know what? I changed my environment changed. I didn't have those people anymore around me who would come to me with the same behavior, with the same energy, showing me you actually chicken and can't play your game. You all the time playing my game. Nothing is off limit, peeps. Nothing is off limit. Lots and lots of different tools, techniques, uh, mm -hmm. choices we can make. Well, yes. Yeah, that's true. We got to just work with what we have in the moment <laughs> and apply it. We can use what you say, question. Oh, I say like my uncle coming all the time with some drama about the news. I said, really? I, that, wow, that's interesting. What's mm -hmm. going on in this world? You know, I put it like a laughing way. But, you know, I make it shocking that he is talking about the news. Or the other day he said about the president from South, South America, oh, this president is, is shaking the world, he's changing the world. I said, what president is that? Yeah. Oh, you don't know oh, what his name? Because, you know, he was so embraced about this president. I said, I, for me, what, I, what, what I care about the president, you know? But I ask questions to him and drop his energize the intention to bring me all his crack about the news and then he just shut that and we change the we change the the conversation right away and you guys have to go have to yeah, go we all had, we all had to have to conversation just, thank, thank you so much bye-bye bye, -bye. Wanna, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Everyone, thanks for uh, liberating and celebrating our uniqueness and recordings going out. And I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.